All right, let's do Aristotle. So, as you know, Aristotle is a Greek philosopher, probably the greatest, greatest philosopher ever in all of human history. And um, there is, I think today, today is the 21st, July 21st, 2020, in the, Wall Street, in the uh, New York Times, there is an op-ed by a philosophy professor, uh, Mrs. Miss, Cal no, Agnes, Agnes Collard, Agnes Collard. She's a philosophy professor, I'm not sure where. Um, and the title of her piece is, Should We Cancel Aristotle? And she starts out by, by the piece by saying, look, I mean, clearly, Aristotle was pro-slavery. He believes the slaves were less than human. But even more than that, Aristotle believed that women were less than human. The women should not be, you know, should not have a vote and should not be, should not own property, should not be treated equally. He, believed, he did not believe in any kind of equality before the law, equality of rights. And he believed that people, you know, he, he, was, he was racist and he was sexist. And I don't even know if slave for Aristotle meant a race. I doubt it. So I doubt that it was an issue of race. I, I think it was more an issue of, of stature, of status. He even believed that workers, people who worked with their hands, were not the equal of everybody else, right? Oh, Greg says Agnes is at the University of Chicago, right? Uh, so, wow, that's a good school. Um, and therefore, she says, you would think, you know, that we would want to cancel Aristotle. She says it's not just Aristotle. You know, she mentions that Kant and Hume were racist, made racist comments, not that they were racist, made racist comments. And Frege, who I don't know, made anti-Semitic ones, and uh, uh, Wit Wittgenstein uh, was racingly upfront about his sexism. Right? And, and, you know, th those are the examples that she gives. Um, and she says, you know, should this be, she says, should this be a basis for canceling them? And, and her focus is primarily on Aristotle. And, you know, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, well, she's going to say yes. <laughs> she's kind of leading us to the idea that we should be canceling Aristotle. And, whoa, this is going to be horrific, right? Um, but she doesn't. <laughs> to, you know, to her credit, she doesn't. And uh, so she says, actually, no, I don't think they should be canceled. And in particular, she says, I don't think Aristotle should be canceled. I think Aristotle has real value. There's some really interesting things about value. Now, I'm not an Aristotle scholar, and, and I'm not going to comment on Aristotle, but, but, but it seems to me from the piece that she way underestimates how valuable Aristotle is. I mean, the, the, the discoverer of logic and, and the father of science and, uh, and his ethics are far more uh, meaningful and deep and interesting and important than the credit she gives them. She kind of brushes it off uh, in a certain respect. She says, you know, we could use some of the Aristotelian ethics in terms of uh, excellence, his, 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 uh, his uh, veneration of excellence. But she says, no, we shouldn't. And actually, we should teach Aristotle and teach these others, not because necessarily, somewhat because of they have some positive values. But more importantly, she says, we shouldn't judge them. And, and this is, you know, I'm interpreting what she's saying because at some point, and I have to admit, at some point in my view, she turns to um, philosopher speak, which makes it difficult for me to follow. So we might have to have Greg on to explain exactly what she's saying. But my sense is she's, she's arguing for tolerance, and she doesn't really argue very well for tolerance, but she argues for tolerance on the one hand. Um, and on the other hand, she argues for taking context into account, which I think is a, good, is a good argument. She says, in a sense, she's saying, again, she doesn't say it clearly, so I'm not sure this is her argument. But in a sense, she's saying, you've got to take the context of their life. You've you got to take the context of the time from which they're coming. She, she describes aliens coming to earth and she says if aliens showed up and said uh, we believe blacks are inferior to whites then i would disagree with them 
but I wouldn't cancel them in a sense. I would, I would listen to them. I would, I would, because they come from a different context. They come from something else. They don't know what we've lived. They don't have an experience. I want to know what they have to say, and I debate it. Right? And she says, Aristotle, reading Aristotle today in the context in which we live today is almost like he's an alien. He's coming from a completely different world, completely different context, and we should debate it. We should argue it. We should listen. Now, there's a certain sense in which she's right and a certain sense in which she's not, right? Listening to other ideas that you disagree with, particularly ideas that come from a different part of history or from a different universe, like an aliens, not a different universe, a different planet system, like aliens, yes. But at some point, once the context has been established, I think it's important that some ideas be dismissed. Some ideas, I hate using the left's terminology, so I'm not going to say should be canceled, but some ideas should not be tolerated. Evil generally should not be tolerated. I am not tolerant of racists. I'm not tolerant, tolerant of communists. I'm not tolerant of Nazis. I don't want to be in the same room with them. I will not get on a stage with them. If I meet one, I will get angry. I'm not tolerant of them. There are certain, I think, in any respectable society, respectable culture, and this is my, the argument I tried to make the other day about cancel culture. There's a certain sense in which canceling people is right. By the way, James, thank you. That is incredibly generous. I really appreciate it that canceling is right. It's the right thing to do. There's some words that are not acceptable anymore. You, you don't say the N-word. And I think that's fine, given the history. I mean, I think it's, it's fine not to say it. And if you say it, you know, you better know what you're saying and there better be a context. Right? But certainly the ideas, certain ideas like racism should not be tolerated. Now, I agree completely. Aristotle needs to be taken within the context. It needs to be studied within the context of the history and of human knowledge at the time. And those ideas need to be dismissed as wrong. And then you go on to study other ideas that are, are right in Aristotle's case. Right? And because there's value there, because they're good ideas, because they're right ideas, he should be studied. But imagine if Aristotle was just a racist. Imagine there's another thinker, and I don't know of one, but they, that is just horrible. Everything they say is evil and wrong. Then, no, there's no point in studying them. Unless within a context of some historical speciality. So, it's... There is such a thing as intolerant... As not tolerating certain ideas. Not tolerating certain people. And certain ideas particularly in the world we live in today, mean immorality. They represent immorality. Certain ideas like, if you're a communist, you're, you're an evil bastard. You're a bad person. Because there's no way you can ignore the evidence. There's no way you can ignore the evidence of what the communists did. And the same thing about a Nazi. If you're a Nazi today, you're an evil person. It's, it, the ideas reflect on your own morality, accepting certain ideas. Is constitutes an immorality because it constitutes evasion. Now again, you can say, okay, he's 16 years old, he hasn't studied anything, he doesn't know anything. Fine. At, at a certain young age, you can give people a pass, but at some point, no more. I think I've told the story of the communist. I told the story. I've told the story at least once. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sitting at a. Um, I'm sitting in the studio. Uh, in the green room of the John Stossel show at Fox a few years ago. And, you know, I'm surrounded by a bunch of, you know, libertarian uh, intellectuals, typically. Uh, the kind of people who show up on, um, on, uh, on John Stossel. Somebody says, I sound like a self-righteous Marxist. I'm self-righteous. I don't see nuanced complexity or context in racism, Nazism, or communism. I mean... 
I see some nuance in religion, but certainly not in racism, communism, Nazism. There's no nuance. You're, an evil, you're evil if you hold those ideas. And I'm self-righteous. I'm a self-righteous objectivist. I do not tolerate evil. So I'm sitting there, surrounded by kind of the, the usual people who would be in, um, at a John Stossel show. And a guy walks in and somebody says, oh, he's a communist. And everybody's like chatting with him. How's it going? How are you doing? You know, everybody's treating him nicely and as if they're all pals. And, um, and uh, I, it turns out, I think I was debating him on, on the Stossel show without even knowing it. But uh, well, I came right after him. I can't even remember. But anyway, um, everybody's treating him like he's a normal guy. And I'm like, really? He's a communist? I said, yeah, yeah. He comes from a long line of, you know, Jewish uh, 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 kind of leftists, New York left uh, commies. And he's, he's a communist. He considers himself a communist. And I, I just got so angry. And I just started laying into this guy. I, you know, and, and everybody else, nobody would take him on. Everybody was like polite and nice and friendly and everything. And I was like, you, you don't, you're not friendly with a communist. You can't do that. You can't just shake a communist hand and pretend everything's fine. He holds an anti-life, genocidal ideology. And I said to the guys, if a Nazi, if somebody walked in and said, I'm a Nazi, would you treat him like a normal human being? And they all said, well, of course not. And why do you treat communists like normal human beings? They're not. So, um, so yeah, so we landed up, I, I landed up yelling, you know, getting angry at the guy and, uh, and condemning him and blaming him for, for hundreds of millions of, for a hundred million deaths. And he was defending himself and, and the people came out literally from the war, from the, um, makeup room, everybody. And they literally put chairs around me going after this guy in, um, in, in the Stossel thing. And, and then I think we, I can't remember if we landed up on camera together or separately, I, I can't remember. But I have no patience for that. And yes, I'm, I'm intolerant, and I'm, uh, what, what did he call me? He called me something Marxist. Anyway, so I, 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 I'm self-righteous. I don't know why I'm self-righteous Marxist. And then he says, I sound like I'm religious. Well, am I religious or am I Marxist? Decide. You, you want to have me being, I'm just self-righteous. It doesn't have to be religious, and it doesn't have to be Marxist. I actually believe in that there is a truth out there. There's right or wrong, there's good and evil, and one has to take a stand. And if you don't take a stand on the side of good, then you're taking a stand by default on the side of evil. So, you know, you're either gonna fight, or by default, you're helping the bad guys win. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. 
uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. Not sure when the next...